Testing, testing. One, two, three, testing. Good morning. Chum rip sua. Chum rip sua. Nu mai, nu mai. Welcome, welcome. Um, today we're talking about uh, hospitality. So um, I first started with uh, if you if you a visitor, we welcome you. If you just come back after the lockdown, it's welcome back. We all welcome. Thank you. Um, let us start with with prayer. Bow our head and prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you brought us here today. We glad, we gladly surrounded our life to you and worship and prayer to you. As we get together, we remember those who are not with us today. For those who are sick, we ask for healing. For those who are away, we ask for your blessing to be upon them. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to move freely among us. Come dwell in each one of us heart. Equip us, challenge us, comfort us, teach us, inspire us, as we learn more about you and your wonderful way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, any notice here this morning? I think we have uh, AGM uh, after the service. Um, you're welcome to join us and to uh, hear the update that we have. Uh, thank you. And uh, if you want to follow us, we also have the uh, newsletter and also have the email, have the Facebook. The Facebook pretty good as well. They got uh, the YouTube in there, so you can have a look through. Um, you're most welcome. The, the theme today is the power of hospitality. And um, I just read one scripture to you, and then I'll show you some slides, and then uh, then we'll move on from there. All right, I'll read from Matthew 10, verse 40. Anyone who welcomes you, welcome me. And anyone who welcomes me, welcome the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. And some, some, uh, some Bible, some, uh, they say, receive. Whoever receive you, receive me. And whoever receive me, receive him who sent me. So when I talk about hospitality, I can see as a normal hospitality and Christian hospitality. I, I'll use an example um, 11 years ago, we start the English class here. And then we go, the uh, Gordon and Jan from East West College, we went together in every Cambodia bakery it's in Hamilton and uh, some of them in Morrinsville. We went to visit them and we tell them that we will have English class here. So they join us and then Two years later, they find out that uh, we seem to be so like, force them a little bit to become a Christian. That's why we have English class at church. And we'll keep praying about it. And Sa and I was decided to open our home from then on. And every Wednesday night, we have a lot of people coming to our house to study English. So those study English, I will show you some, some picture here. Um, we have about 
15 people, sometimes 20, or, some, or most of them are stranger. Uh, most of them are really completely stranger. We see also different sort of nationality. We see Indian uh, married to China, Chinese people, and we see all different sort. And all those strange to us. And then a lot of people asking us that, why, why we open a home like that? And we, we don't know, but we, we're doing what the Bible tells us to do. All right? And it's so strange. Every Wednesday, sometimes comes up, put the signs up, sometimes I put the signs up, and we don't expect that the people that we know are coming. And, and we have all sorts. Sri Lanka, uh, Brazilian, uh, all sorts of people come. And now, up to 11 years now, and still carry on. That we praise the Lord, praise the Lord, be able to use our home for, for this uh, English lesson. So, uh, which was incredible. All right, so uh, just an example of that. And I also see that some people do not want to welcome others uh, who are, who's not like them. So, uh, sadly, it's happened as well as a church, you know. Um, to, be, to be honest with you, every Christian is called to practice hospitality, but it doesn't not it doesn't it does not mean that everyone practice in the same way. We practice hospitality. hospitality by sharing our resource and our need, by serving both hosts and guests, as Jesus, he did when he walked through this earth. Hospital, hospitality work on the same project as tithing. You are either giving or you are even you are receiving. So uh, I think. This, hospital, his, this hospitality is, is come from God. The gospel come with the house key. And that house key is unlocked hundredfold of God's provision of family, community, for other. Hospitality is the ground zero of Christian life. So it's incredible that God gave us this. We have to invite those people to come to uh, God's family. Welcome them. Okay, uh, Mike, music, please. Sounds very daunting, doesn't it? Mike, music, please. <laughs> um, had a phone call this morning that our music team um, have all come down with the bot. Um, so half an hour ago, we just put a few songs together. So we're going to do it karaoke style. We're just going to sing one for the kids today, which is My Lighthouse by Rent Collective. So I'm wondering if we could all stand. And uh, Steve might be able to bring that up on the screen. So I just want to thank my backing band today. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. Your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness to show
Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, just just uh, say before about the English class. Just wondering that uh, you're wondering w w where I get the teacher from. It's um, a credit to East West College. Every year they give us uh, two or three teachers come along, and the teacher come and go, and the students the same come and go. Was credit to them. Uh, very, very, very blessing to have them help us in English class. Um, can I welcome the children, please? Any children? Yeah, come on. Welcome. Welcome. Well, I've got three, that's good. <laughs> yeah, there's more than one, that's awesome, all right? Uh, I think, I just wanted to ask you a question. If you see the welcome signs on the doormat, or people welcome you in the house, or sometimes when you go back to school, this back to school yet? Sorry? You go back to school yet? You have? That's good, and teacher welcome you back? Yes. That's very good. So I uh, just want to ask you a question. What, what do you think of welcome mean? You see, in our website, we got welcome as well. And we got this father and son, welcome. And then uh, we got Jesus, welcome all the children here. All right, so welcome. What do you think welcomes mean? So I think we can we can have the the big people helping us, right? So what welcomes mean? Good question. We don't we say all the, we say a lot, but we are not really sure what welcome means, is, right? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Good example, right? So welcome is sort of like a friendly greeting or, or uh, welcome someone or uh, make them feel at home or uh, gladly receive if we got something as nice and, you know, especially in the, in the uh, Christmas time or birthday and they give you some stuff and you say that uh, uh, that's lovely and thank you and they said uh, you're welcome, you know. So... So welcome is really, really sort of two things, if you like. Uh, you, you welcome someone at your home sometime, invite them for dinner, and you know. So yeah, welcome is, uh, Jesus make it clear that when we welcome others, we are serving them. So uh, it, 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 which is very good. We, we, we welcome them, we serve them. So that's what we welcome in. And welcome is uh, the communis communicate God's love to all the people and, uh, and uh, let them know that they are valued and cared for. So that's, that's welcome is. Uh, and uh, you can see that, that that's what meaning of welcome, all right? So... Um, I'm going to ask Teresa to come and pray for us before you go to your uh, service. And what I want you to do is repeat after Teresa, all right? Uh, all the big people there also can repeat after her. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for welcoming us into your family. We know that you value and care for all people. Help us to be welcoming to others and let us demonstrate your love to those in our lives. Thank you for your love. 
We love you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Trisha. Well done. Wow. Now you can go back to your seat or your service. I'm not sure if we got one. Yeah. Yeah, follow Mark. Yeah. Thank you. As the children go, I'll ask uh, Joanna to come pray for other, please. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You are high and lifted up. You are from everlasting to everlasting. There is no one like you. You reign over all. Power and might are in your hands. We praise you today and always. Thank you for who you are our loving and gracious Father, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. We come boldly before you, throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need for our world, your world. As it tries to cope with the devastating effect of the COVID-19, bring relief, calm amid the storm, and peace among the chaos. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. May they know that you are their peace and refuge, a very present help in times of trouble. We lift our country out there, Lord, before you. We pray for those in power, our leaders. Give them wisdom as they guide and steer our country forward from the aftermath of COVID-19. May the decision and legislation they implement align with your laws and, most of all, your will. We remember Constable Matthew Hunt, the police officer who was slain while on duty. Father, your heart breaks when a human life created in your image is taken by lawlessness. We pray for comfort, healing, and peace among our police department, colleagues, friends, and families. Let your healing power flow like a river among those dear and close, so they can begin to make sense and find peace in their grief. We thank you that you are our protector and provider. You have said that when we call on your name in prayer, you will hear us. Hear our prayer for our city of Hamilton, the Fairfield and Enderley community. We pray for the various ministries within our parish that is reaching out and touching lives in these communities. Desert Spring, Icons, Soup for Schools, Bible in Schools, The Hub, and others. May we see people respond to you in repentance and faith. We long and desire for hearts to turn to you. May we work and we may work and labor, but it is you who gives growth. May your church be like a city on a hill, shining your light into the darkness of the world. We remember those in our church family who are battling with illnesses at this time. Give them a firm trust in your goodness. Sustain them, Father. Restore and raise them up to full health. We pray for your complete healing of every cell in their bodies. Let your peace and courage be their companions. Take them deeper in their faith as they trust in you for the restoration of health. We pray for our church leaders. Mike and Karen, Chris and Andy, the council and the MLT. 
We pray for your protection over them and their families from the attacks of the enemy. Fill them with fresh vision as they shepherd your people. Strengthen their spirit and restore their souls through the work of your Holy Spirit. May they find rest in your loving care. May the love of the Father, the tenderness of the Son, and the ever-presence of the Holy Spirit gladden our hearts and bring peace today and for all days. Amen. I invite uh, Mike to come, please. I uh, pray for Mike before uh, he start. Heavenly Father, just pray for the Holy Spirit upon Mike that's sharing this gospel, Lord. We pray also for us as a listener. Um, we pray that uh, you in our heart with this gospel, we think in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think what we'll do is we'll just sing. Speak, so I don't know if Steve, you can get that one up, so that's great. I wonder if we could all stand together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no Changes not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Mm. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see, and all I have needed, thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. seated. Wow, unusual times in karaoke and church. <laughs> and that's sometimes um, just thinking a little bit into the future. If we end up going into another lockdown phase, we'll be back online just so that you're aware of that as well and we're trying to get our, our Zoom and everything up and running at the moment for recording our services and making those available. Well, today, as you know, we're just going to have our AGM afterwards, um, and then after that, I'll be racing out to Oaks and doing the AGM out there as well. Uh, they're having a lunch in between. 
Um, but today I just wanted to talk about that sense of hospitality. Um, the passage today that we've been going through is in uh, Matthew chapter 10, and I'll just read these verses. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. I've got another text as well in Hebrews which says, Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality even to strangers. And uh, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. And of course, in Romans chapter 12, there's a famous verse about calling us to, into this art of practicing what we call hospitality. Now, hospitality was rather huge in the ancient Near East and even in other cultures. For example, Zeus, uh, part of the pantheon of Greek deities, um, was the patron of hospitality. And they, even in Greek culture, they used to have the idea that if you showed hospitality, there's a possibility that you could be entertaining one of the deities. And of course, we have stories like in Genesis 18, where Abraham is entertaining three special guests and visitors, and it turns out that's exactly what is going on in his hospitality. Hospitality is what we would call a spiritual discipline or actually a spiritual practice um, that you see constantly throughout reading the New Testament and the Old Testament. It is absolutely incredibly critical. Um, when you look at Jesus' his prime teaching moments, many of them, yes, we could say they were out in the countryside, but many were centered in places of eating and drinking and hospitality in the homes. Yes, he could feed the 5,000, which shows that he was concerned and caring about the whole aspect of us as humans, not just in conveying teachings to us and words to us, but also in feeding us and clothing us and in the sustaining of our physical needs. And his traveling with his disciples meant that they required hospitality. Um, when you read about Martha and Mary and Lazarus, it seems like that was a home that often opened up to Jesus and welcomed him. And even when he was ministering amongst the Samaritans, it says he stayed there with them and they would have extended there and opened their homes to him and to his disciples to live there. But this context is important in Matthew 10 because prior to these verses about welcoming people into your homes and talking specifically about those who have joined and given allegiance to Jesus was the fact that he had said there will be places where you will be ostracized. There'll be places when people will not welcome you. You could even be not welcomed even in your own family and sent out from your own family because of your allegiance to me. So following me is going to be very difficult at times. And that is why it's so important that you have safe places and that you, if you are a follower of mine, that you open your home to be a safe place to shelter those who have been ostracized or rejected because they are my followers. And uh, I've got to, as I think I've shown you this once before, um, but when I was in India, this is exactly the story of this young boy here. Um, when I was over there about in 2013 or 14, uh, this young boy came to me and asked me for prayer. Um, he came from a Hindu background, and I said, well, how can I pray for you? And he said, could you please pray that God could bring a reconciliation between me and my parents at some stage? I said, well, what's the background story? And he said, well, when he heard the gospel and he was gripped by it and the Spirit of God was drawing him to Jesus, he, he announced to his family, they were a Dalits, a very low caste, that he said, look, I'm, I'm just so enamored with Jesus, and I, I just want to follow Jesus. And his father went to get a machete to cut off his head. And as he took a swipe, the young boy managed to duck and miss, and he ran out of that house, and he's never seen his parents since. And so he had to run by himself as a young boy into other villages, and in there he found followers of Jesus who said, welcome into our home. 
and they took care of him. They loved him and they showed him hospitality. Now his heart is to be able to, as part of the caste system that he's been involved in, was to come out of that to get an education, which he is doing and which he had done, and then to be able to be in a position to help the very poorest of the poor of his family. And so that was his deep desire, not to keep running from them, but praying for them, but knowing that it still wasn't safe for him to go home. So hospitality saved his life. It was followers of Jesus who took sincerely that word to open their home and to receive. And that's so important. Like even in India, I was reading the other day, it says Mahatma Gandhi once critiqued Christians. And he said, I like your Christ, but I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are at times so unlike your Christ. (laughs) And so when we are practicing hospitality, we are most like Jesus. And it's important that we think this one really carefully through because often It is the place where God brings people into the knowledge of himself. And when we go through the next point, which is the breadth of the hospitality. In Hebrews it says, don't forget to show hospitality, not just to those followers of Jesus who will need it, who will need the sheltering and the protection at times because of the hostility that they're experiencing in this world, but also to those who are strangers. Uh, The word is xenos, which means those who are outside, as it were, the circle of your nationality, outside your demographic circles, your socioeconomic circles, thinking particularly of those who are in some ways so different from you, fleeing as refugees from places of hostility. You see, in ancient times when you traveled, it was critical that you found a safe place. And when you go through the Old Testament, the New Testament, You find people sometimes found in squares and marketplaces or by wells waiting to be invited in to a home or into a place. Uh, You can read that. um, I was reading it the other day in the Old Testament how, you know, and Lot was took the angels into his house and another place uh, a priest was taken into his house, etc. And so this was really important. And in the ancient codes, they had health and safety issues around hospitality as well. It wasn't just, you're a stranger, I'll take you in. No, they had, first of all, that they would see the person out there, and they would have a screening process. And in the screening process, it could be that somebody had a letter of recommendation, or they had a word of recommendation, or somebody had accompanied them to that town who would introduce them to somebody that they knew, and so the person would feel safe, that it wasn't somebody that was coming in to steal from them, to rob from them, etc. And so the next process was that in that hospitality, there was an expected incredible generosity, that there was a Laying down, as it were, of your own life for others, you would give of your provisions, you would wash the feet. But there was also a reciprocation that went on when the guest would also contribute into the life in some way of the home. And it was expected that you would never outstay maybe two days, was tended to be a normative uh, quantity of time there. And of course, in other cases, that may have been um, extended. But the theological basis for this was for them to reflect on how God had been hospitable to them. In Deuteronomy, it says, For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords. He is the great God, the mighty and awesome God, who shows no partiality, and he cannot be bribed. He ensures that orphans and widows receive justice. He shows love to who? The foreigners living among you, and he gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to the foreigners or to the strangers. For you yourselves know what it's like to be a foreigner in the land of Egypt. And this is something we must pause. Some of us have been, all of us at some stage, have been foreigners to God's hospitality in Christ, in the kingdom of God. And so we know what it is to be graced, to be invited into God as we are. People who are a ragamuffin bunch, people that have struggled with their humanity. And so that is the kind of welcome that we've received from God, and He expects us to reciprocate that, to give that to others. 
And in fact, you could say that all through the journey through the wilderness that the children of Israel went through, they were saved by God's hospitality with his provisions of food and and shoes that never wore out. It was the manifestation of his generous grace that brought them through and even into the promised land. But he specifically told them, care for the poor, the immigrants, the refugees, because that was your status. And you know what it's like to be in that boat in the past. You're not in a priv- you were in that situation. So remember that time and remember this is what I want you to do for others. You see, God's vision was never for a particular family of a particular race. But they were called specifically through Abraham to reveal God to the nations so that ultimately the nations would come into the family of God. Because Abraham's vision was for that, that God gave him, you'll be the father of many nations. And so when we isolate other nations like Israel did, they became very exclusive and they failed to fulfill this command of God. I always remember that famous but sad line from Martin Luther in the 60s in in America uh, where he said the most segregated hour in the United States is 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And what he was saying was that it was the time when often if you would have people ethnically different and you would have the whites here on this church and you'd have the blacks here on that church, And yet it was the most segregated hour. And yet they would all be reading on both sides this text in Colossians. There is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all who received him. And so it's natural that we come together because we feel comfortable, because of our cultures are the same. But there are times when we are missing out because we're not engaging in other cultures. And and sometimes I can see, you know, and learn things. Like I visited a a refugee family the last, maybe a couple of months ago with Karen, and they wanted to give us a meal. And it was so embarrassing that we sat down and this massive table of food before us of everything that they could get, and, 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 you know, they weren't earning money, but they were so generous and just grateful that, you know, Karen had taken them to doctors and introduced and done all those sorts of things and helped. And they just wanted to bless us. And I sat there looking at all this food, and it spoke to me, and I thought, this is exactly like this hospitality of the Middle East, <laughs> that it would have been like this in Jesus' day. They were so generous in, in giving out, even of their particular poverty. And so we've got to realize too that in a Western world we often have brought up and grown up thinking statements that come through the news like Christianity is Western. But it's not. And in fact it's universal in its scope and its origins are Middle Eastern. And in fact right now we would be in the minority in the world in terms of ethnic um, ethnicity as white, for example, Europeans. We would be in the minority of Christians now across the world. And in fact, a Yale University professor, and I read this the other day in a book, who is not a follower of Jesus, but he was saying about the critics of Christianity, um, whom he was no doubtedly one, he said, a difficulty endemic to today's secular left culture is an all too frequent weird refusal to acknowledge the demographics of Christianity. He pointed out that today in the States, the largest demographic is black women who will be in a church today. While around the world, the most likely group are to be women of color. So he said, when you mock Christians, you're not mocking whom you think you are. (laughs) The largest Christian population, they think, in the future in 20 years could be in China. More Christians in China than in the United States, I read in one particular survey. Timothy Keller, who I really enjoy his writings, he planted a church in Manhattan, a very strong financial district, and there were hardly any churches in that particular area. Nobody seemed to be interested in religious chatter. But now he would say that by far the minority of churches in that area would be predominantly white ethnically. The rest that are being planted are from other nationalities. 
So the church is a multicultural, multi-socio-economic bunch of people who are united by the sincere love of Jesus and a deep desire to follow him. And this is something that we actually have to work on. We can have some really funny moments in it. I read the other day of one particular lady who was in a church that was so multicultural, trying to get used to, to experiencing people of different backgrounds. She said one of them was a Nepalese friend she had. And uh, she introduced herself, and, and um, this lady, Rebecca, said, what's your name? And the lady said, uh, my name is Deepa. And she said, well, what does Deepa mean? And she said, it means light. And so then she returned the compliment. Your name's Rebecca. What does Rebecca mean? And she said, it means, first of all, a beautiful woman. Secondly, a good wife. And for it laugh, it means also a cow. <laughs> to which my Nepalese friend said, a cow. How beautiful. <laughs> for them, cows mattered. So you can get some really cool moments. Even this week. You know, what hits me is, is over recently, two, Sunday, two Saturday nights ago, this place was packed with Pakistani Christians and Muslims were here. And then next door was the Indian Fellowship. And here on Sunday night, there will be the um, Filipino Fellowship. And then during the week, E.B. brought in a, a young Indian man who's starting up a Pentecostal um, fellowship and speaking in Malalai. And I'm going, this is incredible. <laughs> this is happening all around the West and all around the world. And in fact, it's often through immigration of Christians that Christianity is actually growing statistically in the West. And so the third thing that I wanted to bring up was some people have called it the third sacrament. Now, in understanding a sacrament like baptism, we would say is a sacrament, communion is a sacrament. It's a place where we believe there's a sense that God's grace is conveyed to us because of our obedience to him. And the elements are simple. There's water, there's wine, there's bread. But also in fellowship, some commentators, and as Timothy Keller was saying, in a sense that God also conveys himself and his grace when we are involved in loving the stranger. There is a sense of transaction that goes on. There's a manifestation that God's grace is towards us, empowering us, enabling us to be about his business of showing hospitality and how his desire is to welcome them into his kingdom. An example of this is a simple little example, but I, I was at another church on a Sunday night, and I remember just in partly in the worship and putting my eyes to the left, and there was a young man, we'll call him Mr. R., who was just sitting there with his daughter. And it brought back memories of this particular person who in 1988 came into our house as a non-believer in Jesus. And Karen had invited him. And it was a great privilege. I still remember that night for some crazy reason is that he opened up and we were able to share the, the Jesus story with him. I shared my testimony with him. He was come from a very... Um, he had grown up in a, in a sincere Christian home, but had really gone astray. And, and just in that context of hospitality, I remember the grace of God, the sense of God at work in that environment. And then 32 years later, just looking over and seeing him now, he's married and got all of these families and attending this church. It just made me aware that that was part of his journey in coming into faith. And there were other homes, naturally, that would have opened to him. So we were only a small part of the journey, but it was in that context of hospitality that the grace of God was apparent to convey the message of Jesus. And the other thing that I was thinking about too is that even when we read John 14 at a funeral, we often read those words that, I will come to you and I will take you to my place. And there's a room prepared for you. <laughs> So in the sense that even death, we're invited into God's hospitality. He takes us into a place prepared for us. And you wonder what's in there to refresh our hearts and to bring healing and, and refreshing to our lives. And so we are saved by God's grace through Jesus Christ, through his death and through his resurrection. But it's often through hospitality that we really sense God's grace at work in and through us and around us. 
So the question is, how can we become hospitable people, especially in a world with COVID? <laughs> how do we connect with people? Those are the challenges that are ahead of us. And I often think, well, who needs your hospitality right now? Who is the stranger? Who is the lonely one? Who is the refugee that you know? Who is the person that if you said, Holy Spirit, just bring somebody into mind that you would have me to be hospitable to? I wonder who that person would actually be. Because in the grace of God, you might be unaware, but you might be actually experiencing that you're doing something as unto Jesus. When you read these words, then the king will come and say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. This is what um, it says, I say to myself, this is Mother Teresa, this is hungry Jesus when I see before me someone in hunger and I must feed them. When I see somebody sick before me, she says, this is sick, Jesus. Or this one has leprosy or gangrene. I must wash him and tend to him. I must serve because I love Jesus. Really interesting. This person in front of me, this sick person in front of me is Jesus. That's her way of framing and looking at that last passage. So that person matters to Jesus because Jesus has said, this is judgment day. This is really where the rubber hits the road. And all of these things are around hospitality. The word hospital comes from that. <laughs> he was saying those things like when I was naked or when I was this or when I was a refugee or when I was a stranger. It was, it was like you took me in. And, and that's what Jesus wants to reward but it's very much centered around this whole aspect of hospitality, of welcoming, and being a welcomer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you welcomed us who were aliens from you, strangers to you, that you actually came out of your house in heaven and came to take us from our places into your place which is in Jesus. We thank you for the warm welcome that you have given to us, that you have given us an authority, you've raised us up, you've reclothed us to go and represent you to others with the same experience that we've experienced. Help us not to lose sight of that, that we have been graced and that we must be gracious to others. I pray, Father, that you would help us in our hospitality that you would just send the right people across our path. I pray that you will keep us safe in the process, discerning in the process, but help us, Lord, not to uh, hold back with the resources that you have given to us to make others know that you love them and that you are there. And I pray that doors will open for us to confess you before men. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, the, the boy that is showed the picture there, uh, welcome has saved his life. And uh, remind me of one story, welcome has saved my Christian faith. Um, I believe uh, I received Christ 
in the in the leprosy hospital, and I, I believe in the in the hospital there for two years, and I never joined the church. First day that I went to church, I was sit out the back. There's a few people sit beside me, and then they look at my face and they move forward. And this guy is at the back, lean forward, touch his arm on my shoulder, and said, welcome. I remember that to keep me in that church. And from there on, that was incredible. God showed me up today. So I'm going to do a benediction uh, in Khmer, and then I'll finish in English. From uh, Second Corinthians 13, verse 14. The grace of God, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to have a cup of coffee out there. Uh, I think Chanda uh, uh, and Sa are serving you there. Thank you. And yeah, we're back here about 10 minutes for AGM. Uh, yeah, you're most welcome.